Now, in the hot air balloon topic, we saw that when we dropped objects on Earth, they actually fell a little bit slower than we expected due to air resistance. Now, in liquids, we have what's called a viscosity, and this is a very similar effect to air resistance. Very viscous fluids have a lot of friction in them, which works to stop them moving. So if we have a viscous fluid flowing through a pipe, at the edges of the pipe, which is stationary, the fluid flows very slowly because there's lots of friction there trying to stop it flow. As we get closer and closer to the centre of the pipe, instead of being next to the pipe, which is absolutely stationary, the fluid in the middle is next to other fluid, which is flowing slowly, and so the fluid in the middle actually flows a little bit faster than the fluids on the outside. So this is caused by the viscosity or the internal friction of the fluid. So what we're going to look at now is a demonstration showing the different viscosity of two fluids. Here in this measuring cylinder, we've got water. In this measuring, in this measuring cylinder, we've got glycerol, which is a much more viscous fluid. And so as the viscosity is an internal friction, we'd expect bores to drop much more slowly through the more viscous fluid than through the less viscous fluid. So let's have a look now at what happens when I drop these bores at the same time into these two fluids. You can see the one in the water fell, might hit the bottom of the flask earlier than the one in the glycerol. As they went down, they took some trapped air with them and you can see that in the water, the bubbles also travelled much more quickly to the top of the water than happened in the glycerol. So viscosity of a fluid actually depends a bit on the temperature of the fluid. So you'd be aware of this if you've ever tried heating up honey or cooking oil. As the cooking oil or honey gets hotter, it's much easier to pour it. It flows much more smoothly and this is because the viscosity is decreasing. So viscosity is given the symbol, the Greek letter eta. So that looks like a curly N eta for viscosity. So the other thing which gets in the way of ideal fluid flow is turbulence. Most fluids become turbulent at a critical velocity. So Osmond Reynold, who lived from 1842 to 1912, was the first one who did a quantitative study of the onset of turbulence. And what he found was that it wasn't just dependent upon the velocity of the fluid, it also depended on the viscosity, the density, and the diameter of the pipe through which the fluid was flowing. So turbulence happens when we start to get whirlpools and things in the liquid. So when a liquid's flowing nice and smoothly, then there's no turbulence and this is called laminar flow and every particle making up that fluid is flowing at the same velocity. Now when we get turbulence, there's a bit of random motion imposed on top of this. So the average velocity of the particles in the fluid is the same, but some of the particles might get a little bit of a speed or a velocity to the left and some a little bit to the right. Some might go backwards for a small time and some might go forwards extra fast. So the average speed of all those particles is the same, but each of the individual particles making up the fluid has its own slightly different velocity. So we can see the onset of turbulence when we turn on a tap. So let's just have a quick look at that now. Now if we turn on a tap gently to start with, you can see initially we've got this laminar flow because there's no bubbles or anything in this fluid flow here. All the particles making up the water are moving downwards with the same velocity. 
Now if we turn up the amount of fluid flow, you can see that we begin to get turbulent flow. Some of these water molecules are moving a bit to the left, some are moving a bit to the right. On average, they're all moving downwards, but this is turbulent flow. So Osmond Reynolds managed to describe this quantitatively. He came up with an equation. The Reynolds number is equal to the density of the fluid times the average velocity of the particles in the fluid times the diameter of the pipe divided by the viscosity. So if a Reynolds number is lower than 2300, then we have a nice laminar flow. So this was what happened when we just turned on that tap and the liquid was flowing out slowly. As we increase the Reynolds number by turning on the tap a little bit more and increasing the velocity a bit, the Reynolds when the Reynolds number hits 2300, we start to get a mixture of laminar or steady flow, ideal fluid flow and turbulence. And then when the Reynolds number gets up above 4000, we've got completely turbulent flow and we can't really apply our equations for ideal fluid flow anymore. So turbulence happens in rivers when they get narrow, they start flowing very quickly and we see whirlpools and things develop inside the fluid. In a minute we'll solve a problem with the Reynolds number. But first, let's just consider dimensions a bit because we haven't mentioned the dimensions for viscosity yet. Now Reynolds number is actually dimensionless. Okay, so Reynolds number is given by the density times the velocity times the diameter over the viscosity. So let's show that this is dimensionless and in showing this we'll show the units for the viscosity. So rho is equal to the density of the fluid. So the density of the fluid is measured in kilograms per meter cubed. V is the velocity or speed, which as we'll see later has the units of meters per second. D is the diameter, and the SI units for diameter is it's a length, so it's measured in meters. Now viscosity has units of pascal seconds. Now, we can actually simplify these units a bit further because we know that pascals is the units for pressure and pressure is equal to force over area. Now, force, is, as we'll see in later videos, is actually equal to the mass times the acceleration and this is over area. So the SI units for mass are kilograms. The SI units for acceleration are meters per second per second, so that's ms to the minus 2, and the units for area are meters squared. So we can cancel this meter with this meter, and so we've got kilograms over meters second squared, moving this s to the minus 2 and writing it as s squared on the bottom. So Pascal seconds. Pascals are kilograms over meters second squared, and this is times seconds here. So that cancels, and we end up with kilograms over meter seconds is the units for viscosity. Okay, so now we're going to work out what the units for Reynolds number are, and hope, hopefully we'll be showing that these are in fact dimensionless. So the units for Reynolds number. So density, that's kilograms over meters cubed. The units for velocity are meters over seconds. The units for diameter, that's meters. And now we have to divide by the viscosity. So we times it by the inverse of this. So this is meters seconds over kilograms. And now let's cancel out all our common factors. So there's kilograms here and there's kilograms here. There's meters cubed and there's one, two, three meters on the top. So these ones all cancel. Seconds on the top and seconds on the bottom. 
So this tells us that they all cancel out. And so hence, um, the Reynolds number is dimensionless. And in proving this, we've assumed that the units for viscosity is pascal seconds, or alternatively, we can write it as kilograms divided by meter seconds. Okay, let's solve a problem now. So the question, what is the minimum speed of water from a tap with a diameter of 7.00 millimeters for which the flow can be considered turbulent? We're told that for water at 20 degrees C, the viscosity is 1.002 times 10 to the minus 3 pascal seconds and the density is 998.2 kilograms per meters cubed. Now to answer this, we're going to need to use Reynolds number. Reynolds number is given by the density times the velocity times the diameter over the viscosity. And we know that for turbulent flow, we need a Reynolds number of 4,000 or above. And what we're trying to find in this case is the velocity. So let's rearrange this equation to make the velocity the subject. So we've got that the velocity is equal to Reynolds number times the viscosity divided by the density on the diameter. Okay, so now we can substitute everything in. The minimum number that the Reynolds number can be is 4,000. And we're trying to get the minimum velocity, so we'll need to use that minimum number. So the viscosity is 1.002 times 10 to the minus 3. The density is 998.2. And the diameter is 7 millimeters, which we can put as 7.00 times 10 to the minus 3. So that 10 to the minus 3 and that 10 to the minus 3 will cancel each other out. And we end up with, when we type all this into the calculator, we get 0 0.574 meters per second. So it's when the water hits this velocity that the flow will be completely turbulent when it's coming out of the tap.